What's up, everybody? Welcome to the video. We're here breaking down the Hollywood Casino 400 at Kansas Speedway. This will be on Sunday, September 29th, around 3 p.m. Eastern. And I tell you what, I am looking forward to this race. I was looking forward to last week's race at Bristol. Unfortunately, that was just absolutely awful. I mean, if you're into Kyle Larson parades, I guess you probably enjoyed it. But man, brutal race, no passing, just really tough to watch. But fortunately enough for us, Kansas has arguably been the next gen era's best track. So it should be a good one. But anyway, this hasn't been your first time here. What's up? My name is Chris Pinelli. I break down NASCAR DFS each and every single week on this channel. Also do NFL DFS each and every single week if you want to check that out. And really quick, I gave a shout out to last week's comment contest winner, Stan, who was the closest to Larson's lap sled. Now, he might have been off over 100, but he was the closest with 302 projected. Larson led almost every single lap. It was truly impressive performance by him. But if you want to join this week, all you got to do is comment down below who you think is going to lead the most laps and how many, and the winner will get a cash prize. And if you do enjoy today's video, make sure you have a like down below, subscribe to the channel for brand new, and let's dive right into it. All right, let's talk some strategy here for Kansas. This is your typical 1.5 mile track where we're going to want pretty much two dominators per lineup. And if you're looking at similar tracks, you just pretty much look at all the other intermediates that we've ran so far this season. We do have 267 laps, so downer points are at least a little bit important. It's not like last week we're at Bristol where we have 500 laps. 350 dominator points were roughly right around what, 180 dominator points with 267 laps. So yeah, they're still important enough to where you're not going to ignore them. And really quick, we can take a look at the green flag speed cheat sheet to see how these drivers have performed at similar tracks this year. So if we're just specifically looking at intermediates, it's usually always a combination of Hamlin, Larson, Byron, Reddick in some fashion. Usually it's Hamlin and Larson up top. But I do think Byron actually passed him in one of the categories. But anyway, looking at intermediates, Hamlin, Larson, Byron, Reddick. No surprise there. Absolutely no surprise. I know Byron's definitely cooled off since the early portion of the season, which he always seems to do, but he's still been fast. Uh, similar tracks specifically do this season. Denny, Byron, Larson, Gibbs up there as well, but he did qualify well, so we shouldn't be too surprised about that. Truex, Busher, Reddick, really the specific tire combination, which is always going to be a smaller sample size, but still a decent amount of races. So we have Hammond, Larson, Truex, Gibbs, Busher, and Reddick, and if we look how I want to weight it for this week, as always, Hamlin Larson, and then Byron, Truex, Reddit, Gibbs. So these are the guys you would expect to contend, and you should be not surprised at all if you see them very fast in qualifying and very fast in practice. And finally, moving on to the driver-by-driver -driver breakdown, I need to mention one thing first, and that is, of course, if you want to join the best NASCAR and now NFL DFS community out there, link is down below the description or the pinned comment for that. You get access to the entire models for whatever sport you are looking at, or all sports, doesn't matter, optimizers, ownership projections, the sims, Betting model, all that fun stuff. You can find that link down below. But as you all know, I'm a partner of Stochastic and they did launch their Sims tools earlier this year. Not only do they have it for NASCAR, but they have it for NFL as well, which is in complete full swing. And a lot of you have been checking it out and dropping my name. So you let them know that I sent you. And I really do appreciate that. You can simulate the entire slate before it happens, which drivers or players offer the best OI before the race or game starts. And much time to stack up the best in tournaments. So I'm going to give yourself an edge on Sundays, Saturdays, Mondays, Thursdays, whenever the slate happens to be. Make sure you check out the link down below in the description or the pinned comment and tell them I sent you. All right, qualifying and practice just concluded. So we're running through this slate together for the first time. And I got to say, looking at the qualifying order, it looks like there's going to be a couple of major chalk spots here, whether we are on DraftKings or Fandle. I do want to take a quick look at the practice with you all here. Do this sort of by the average. I waited a certain way. And looking at the overall lap by lap data, we do have Chase Light at the top, which is funny because obviously he had an engine issue and he's going to be in the back of the pack. He's going to have to get a new engine and just a big, big mess there for Chase Light. But Hendrick looked extremely strong. Because as you can see, Elliot, Byron, Larson all at the top. Carson Hosevar, who's not in Hendrick, but he's a Chevy. So, uh, Chevy's look overall very fast in practice. Bowman was up there as well. And Toyota nowhere to be seen in the lap by lap day until we get to Eric Jones, unless I'm missing somebody, which I don't think I am. Now, practice is never the end all. Be a lot of times practice numbers can be a bit of a bit fake news ish, but it's looking at it here. Chevy's looked extremely strong. You're gonna see Ty Gaze pop up here. He was really good in the long run, but he did qualify well. There's our first Toyota. Christopher Bell, Denny Hamlin, all these guys qualified in the top 10. So nothing like too surprising here. Like a lot of the cars you'd expect to be good in this race were good. I think the top four in odds heading into the weekend were uh, what Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Tyler Reddick. They're all in the top 10 overall. In practice, I don't think anything too crazy here. But let's start breaking down these drivers. We'll start with the five-figure range first. We have Larson, Hamlin, Raddick, Bell, who I think we can all kind of treat as the same plays, but I do think there's a tier between those two. Then we have the absolute chalk, Chase Elliott, starting in 38th. So just to get Elliott out of the way, 
assuming everything is going to be good to go tomorrow they replace what they need to replace and they fix whatever they need to fix and he is perfectly fine he's in a hender car they're going to be fast he starts dead last i mean there's really no reason not to like chase if you're playing cash games he is a lock in tournaments yeah sometimes you can get away with this by fading these guys and let's just say they that chase elliott finishes 15th and you absolutely nail the doms here like let's say reddick leads 100 laps Eddie ham leads 100 laps and they both finish top two well, as long as Chase Elliott doesn't absolutely go out there and dominate as well, which would be unlikely in that scenario, you can get away with the Chase Elliott fade. But if you're playing cash games, I mean, whether you're on DraftKings or FanDuel, it's going to be pretty much impossible. Get away from Elliott, and I'm assuming my projections will have him as the top play. If he's not the top play, he'll probably be behind Kyle Larson. So speaking of Kyle Larson and Denny Hamill, we'll pretty much group them together, and then Reddick and Bell are in their own tier. But Larson and Hamill are going to be the top plays besides Chase Elliott in this range. He's the top dogs and intermediates every single time. They're so good at Kansas. They were fast in practice. They weren't the absolute best cars in practice, but I'm assuming they're going to be awesome during the race. And if we're looking at their Kansas numbers, we have a five-race sample size in the next-gen era. Denny Hamill with an average finish of 2.8, Kyle Larson 3.4. The two best average running positions. They both have wins, but they've been in the top five nearly every single time hamlin every time larson all but once and they have the most downer points so if you can start your lineups with hamlin and larson that'd be absolutely fantastic the issue is we want to play chase elliott as well so depending on how these value plays look when we get down there we might not be able to play all three together but i would think at the very least you're going to want two of elliott hamlin and larson in your build i could see a lot of people going larson with elliott and then maybe hamlin with elliott if you want to kind of differentiate it with that just to get a combination of early dominator points and then chase light moving through the field as the race progresses. And then we have the tournament plays with Reddick and Christopher Bell. Both these guys have dominator potential. We know Todd Reddick is amazing at these track types. Christopher Bell has not been as good at intermediates as far as being a complete dominator. As you can see, 14 lap slide, Todd Reddick 18 compared to the big dogs, Larson Hamlin. Just specifically at Kansas, and if you're looking at uh, same size of the season at intermediate tracks. They don't quite have the dominant points either. But Chris Rebell on the pole, he is really good at Kansas. He looks like he's got an extremely fast car. I could see him certainly dominating this race. Sam with Tyler Reddick. I think as far as dominators are concerned, Hamlin and Larson will be my top projected for laps led. But then it's right there with Tyler Reddick and Chris Rebell. Ty Gibbs is also going to be in the mix, but he's kind of in a different tier since he's in the 9K range. But I'll be honest, I don't think we have to play Chris Rebell in this late. Just because he's on the pole. I mean, Hamlin and Larson right there with them, Tyler Reddick. They're all going to be project pretty similar, but you also get a bit of a better floor with these guys starting further back. Going down to the 9K range, we have Ryan Blaney at 9,800 bucks. He'll be starting in seventh, kind of far up for me. He's a pivot off of guys, just really anybody in the 10K range, who I don't think will have some decent ownership. Had a fast car in the long run, looking at his Kansas numbers, five very sample size here. Not one top five finish, only one top 10. Blaney should be good in this race, but... I think it'll probably be pretty easy to be off him too much. Really only a tournament play. Same with William Byron, although his numbers at these types of tracks have been a bit better so far this year. Four top 10s and three top fives with some dominator points. Mixed in if you're looking at his Kansas numbers in general, only one top five, but I'm just going to be lower on guys like Blaney and Byron. If you're playing 20 max, playing 150 max, that's when you get to those guys more, but I'm going to be so heavy on guys like Elliott, Hamlin, Larson. It'll just be hard for me to get to these upper 9K guys too much. Up to Martin Truex Jr., who is probably the most snake-bitten driver I've ever seen in my life for one season. Like, he just cannot put together an entire race, whether it's speeding, which I guess is his own fault. But a lot of the times, he just is in the wrong spot, the wrong time, or something stupid happens. Just unbelievable bad luck for Martin Truex Jr. Flicking how he performed in practice. A little bit better than where he qualified. I think it'll be better than 15th or in the race. He should be good. Looking at his Kansas numbers here. Two top fives, four top tens in next gen. Some decent dominant points mixed in. Like, I think he'll be fast. So he's a solid play starting in 19th, whether you're in DraftKings or FanDuel. If Legato burns me this week, he can burn me, but I don't see myself getting there at $9,300. Bucks. Ty Gibbs on DraftKings is tough to get to at $9,200. He could be a pivot off of Chris Rebell. I think they're very similar plays, but probably won't have too much on DraftKings. On FanDuel, $7,500 is extremely cheap for a JGR car and intermediate, especially at Kansas where Toyota just absolutely smashes. So I think I'm going to have to play him over on FanDuel a bit, like just hold a top five which I think is possible in tournaments. Then Bubba Wallace, starting in 13th. Like him more on FanDuel, DraftKings is tough to get to at that $9,000 price tag, but $8,200, bucks, he is pretty cheap. He's won here before. He's a solid play nonetheless. Looking at his practice numbers, 
wasn't overly impressive, unfortunately. 29th, 23rd, 27th, 18th. Gibbs definitely had a lot more speed, but he offers more PD. I don't think he's going to be that bad during the race, but the practice speeds do concern me just a little bit, but his teammate Tyler Reddick was pretty quick, so the cars definitely have speed. Going down to the AK range, Kyle Busch is going to be tough to play starting in third. Practice wasn't amazing for him. We know he's better at these intermediate type tracks rather than like the short flat tracks. His Kansas numbers are usually pretty good. He's usually good at Kansas. Three top 10 finishes, one top five. But the problem is starting in third, there's really like no upside here unless you think he dominates. But I have a hard time seeing Kyle Busch dominate over the likes of say Ty Gibbs, Chris Rebell in this race, or even guys like Reddick, Hamlin, or Larson. So probably gonna be pretty low on Busch, especially considering we have Chris Buescher and Brad Keselowski starting 25th and 26. And if you're looking at their numbers at intermediate so far this year, Keselowski has been arguably one of the most consistent drivers with a 6.6 .6 average finish, three top fives in the top 15 every single time. Bob Buescher's numbers aren't as impressive. He's still been pretty good nonetheless. So this price points on DraftKings, those are pretty nice cash game plays if you happen to land in that range. Briscoe, I keep saying he's going to be a tough guy to get to where he qualifies, but he keeps on performing well. I think he's probably a better fan to play at $7,200. Not a ton of interest on drafting, especially when I can get Keselowski for $200 more, but I hate to keep ruling him out, but I mean, his Kansas numbers have not been that impressive. Alex Bowman was really strong in practice. I think he's playable in 12th in tournaments. Like, I'd rather play Bowman over Briscoe, personally. One of the fastest cars during Saturday's practice session, third, third, second, first, and first. Certainly a fine tournament play. I'd put him in that same range with guys like Bubba Wallace. Not as good of a play as probably Kislowski or Busher, but he is, he's a pivot off of them because I think the ownership will certainly be lower. Dropping down to the 7K range, looks like we have some kind of odd, somewhat place differential plays. Just kind of seems like a range we won't get to too much, just eyeballing it here. Chastain was really fast in practice for the one lap. Other than that, though, 31st, 26th, 19th, and 15th. We know Ross, track house, typically good at these tracks, and specifically at Kansas, five race sample size running position inside the top 10 and overall strong numbers. Like if I'm going to play any 7K driver, I think it would have to be Ross Chastain, fairly priced on both sites. So I'm fine with it. But if you're looking specifically at this season's numbers, the average finish isn't that great, but the running position is still not bad with 11.2. We don't need it. We don't need fireworks. Sub 8K. It's not like we're paying 9K for Ross Chastain these days. So I think he's serviceable for sure. Cindric probably not going to get to a lot of there starting in 17th. I'd rather play Ross. I don't think I'm going to play Suarez starting in 10th. Like, I feel like he'll probably be the same, in the same range finishing-wise with Ross Chastain, but he starts 10 spots further back. I know Ross is in the playoffs, you know, Suarez is, so there's obviously more attention going to Suarez's car, but I don't think that means Ross Chastain can't have a somewhat decent race inside the top 15. And then for Gregson and McDowell, just guys that are really tough to get to. Just ranges I don't really think I'm going to land in too often. I think they can maybe improve a couple of spots, but it's not going to scream play them. Like, Sure, they might be lineup fill fillers. Like, you don't completely pull them out of the pool, but I'm not, like, rushing to play Michael McDowell on this slate. 6K range, we have Josh Berry at $6,800. He'll be starting in 29th. I think he's a fine PD play. Like, finishing position upside is similar to guys like Gregson and McDowell, but he starts much further back. Like, this is going to be easier to get to him. Ricky Snow Sr. starting at 18th. Probably not a lot of interest there. His Kansas numbers kind of put him right around where he finishes, average position of around 20th, or I should say starts. Does have three top 20s mixed in, but... Stenhouse is always a tough guy, because there's just these random races where he just runs like 10th to 15th out of nowhere. And he was 10th in the one lap, but was not that impressive in the 5 and 10. Probably not going to be on Stenhouse much whatsoever. Carson Hosevar, I have more interest in, I think. He's starting in 14th, a lot more speed in practice, first in the 5, and third in the 10. These Spire cars just having to take off in P and Q lately. Only a two race sample size here for Hosovar at Kansas, right around 20th of his average running position. Kind of similar numbers to Ricky Stenhouse, but mainly the practice numbers that might give me a slight edge to Hosovar there. I feel like I can trust him a little bit more. Austin and Dylan, I will probably pass on. Justin Haley does have the uh, car swap this week. He'll be in the seven Spire car for Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy is going to be in the Rick Ware machine down in the 51 car, I believe he's. Yeah, he's $5,700. So the Spire cars definitely have some speed this week. I think Haley is a fine play. Like, he'll probably run top 25, but we do have top 20 potential here for sure. Eric Jones starting in 16th. That's a bit far up for me. I know Kansas in the past has been a good track for him, but, you know, JGR days, like, he'll be okay. He'll probably be, like, around 15th to 20th. There's just not that much upside here. Ryan Priest should have some ownership starting all the way back in 37th. If you're looking at his practice speeds, 35th, 33rd, 30th. Like, he's not 
super fast by any means, but he's starting nearly dead last, and he should be able to gain at least a few spots at the very least. Todd Gillen starting on 33rd. I think people will play him, but I am a little bit concerned about these practice speeds being 36 and 36. Driving down to the 5K range, Jimmy Johnson. Terrible every single time he races. Just really tough to watch. I will be passing. Like, yes, if there's some carnage, he could sneak into the top 30, but I think just based off of speed, there is better plays here. Corey LaJoy is probably going to run borderline top 30. Nemechek, same boat as all of his teammates, although he'll probably run probably run second. Jones will be first, Nemechek second, then Jimmy Johnson will probably crash out at some point, so we won't have to worry about him. Harrison Burton, starting in 28th, can't do it. Zane Smith, just again, the Spire cars, they have some decent speed. Starting in 15th is just a bit high for me, though. Emmerich, Ty Dillon, Grala, Gailey don't really see the need to play them on this slate. Like, these are the kind of guys you play when there's just um, a ton of dominator points and you got to just jam in all these doms, but really you only need two this weekend. So I don't really want to go below the 6K range too much this week. With that being said, that's all I got for you guys this week. So I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, make sure you have a like down below. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Unfortunately, we don't have that many weeks left for NASCAR. The weeks are dwindling down, so we got to enjoy it while it lasts. But I wish you all the best, and I'll see you all next time.